Sinking the Saints. The Eagles survive a fierce comeback against St Kilda to hold on by eight points in front of 43,000 fans at Optus Stadium. It was a king-sized effort by the visitors, but it was Dom Sheed who stole the crown, booting two final quarter goals to steer West Coast to victory. Welcome to Eagle Review, proudly supported by Stake. Of course, you can trade over 4,000 US stocks with $0 brokerage. Download Stake from the App Store today. It was a salivating matchup Saturday afternoon. You had 7th v 11th. The Eagles, they'd lost three of the last four, but the Saints, they were coming. They'd won three of the last four. Arguably could have been four or four against the Port had they kicked better. Tyson Beatty, the tension late in this game, so palpable in the press box if you can get through the plate of sausage rolls that you normally devour. Mm, thank you, Thumper. Oh, the tension in the stadium was actually pretty big. The Eagles hadn't lost three games in a row at home since 2014. Seven years ago, Simo's first year, and they'd never lost three in a row at Optus Stadium. And despite that smaller crowd, about 43,000 on the day, the sound in the stadium at the end, Thumper, was really, really big, especially when the game's starting to tighten up a fair bit. Given the Eagles had had six day breaks back to back, mm -hmm. the intensity from the get go was actually pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And it was a real arm wrestle in the first quarter as well. Have a look at this clip that brought about West Coast's first goal. The tackling pressure from both sides. This was as fierce and frenetic as it comes, followed up with this Shepherd tackles, an absolute ripper. The smother from Cole, bringing about Eagles taking possession of the ball, and it's all Liam Ryan, pinches it away from Zach Langdon in the end, and delivers the ball to Jake Waterman and sets Josh Kennedy up. A good start from Liam Ryan, but it was fleeting, TB. Yeah, absolutely. The following goal after this, Liam Ryan uh, gets it out the back, does really well, reads it well, great speed, and look at the finish on the run. What a goal, but... He tears his hamstring straight after this. Now, this is an unusual one, Thumper, because it's about seven steps after he's kicked the goal, and he's pulled up really properly, no straight away. Very disappointing. Another one on the injury list, unfortunately, for West Coast. Just hasn't had a good run at it this year, Liam Ryan, after his All-Australian season. Well, he also had that shin injury. Mm. You remember that uh, earlier in the season. Jared Brander came on as the medical sub. Played pretty well. 11 touches, about 56% of game time, and he used it pretty well as well. He did. The Saints evened it up late in the first quarter with good midfield pressure, and Darling bobbed up in the first of the second quarter so he was held to donuts in the opening term he got infringed upon too much pressure on the key defense there Shannon Hearn he then bobs up unbelievable again 21 disposals at 90% clip had a fourth half intercept with this mark they bring it about Crips to Darling two in a row Darling ends up with three on the day his first multiple goal haul since all the way back against the Adelaide nine weeks ago it's yeah. been a fair run without multiples yeah and that third one Thumper ties in with Eagles legend Mark Lacra 441 <laughs> goals in his career he'll be flat about that Lecker I love it <laughs> Josh Kennedy also had a really good day coming back from that calf complaint uh, the calf wasn't complaining I tell you the, uh, <laughs> on Saturday afternoon he booted three goals he was really good um, they had six straight between them JK and JD unbelievable accuracy but the second quarter thumper that belonged to one man and it was almost Max King for a little while too he had two goals to start the quarter more on him later but Tim Kelly said hold my power rate I've got this he's an obvious stake high flyer player in focus you can see there isn't a whole lot of movement in comparison to the last few weeks so he's been performing at that consistent level, but it was his score involvements, particularly in the second quarter, that set him apart. The first one here, reading the Paddy Ryder tap to absolute perfection, bombs it inside Ford 50, but it's the follow-up that's most impressive. Jake Waterman wasn't accurate as he would have liked to have been on the day. Beautiful handball there from Schnagum, and uh, Kelly puts it through. Back in the middle straight after, gets the clearance from the Nick Nat handball. JK marks it off his boot. Unreal scenes, and Eagles are absolutely scorching now off the back of number 11. Yeah, and have a look at this one. He gets this kick away here that results in Jamie Cripps punching in this long one from 50 metres out. That's a whopper goal. Kelly, 13 disposals, five inside 50 in that second term. He was absolutely on fire, but cooled off later in the game. Seb Ross spent a lot of time and a lot of attention on him, but that was okay because we had other contributors that came to the game later at that point. The Eagles had three second term goals from six entries. The scores coming from intercepts from attacking midfield. Both teams had 27 inside 50s at halftime thumper, but West Coast 14 scoring shots to six. As flexing that scoring efficiency as they've been doing all year. It was a 28 point halftime margin. The Saints trail. It was eight games this year they've trailed at halftime. They've only come back for one, and you can guess which one it is. 
back in round five mm. against West Coast. 33 points up we were. I was at Eddie Had crying into my hot box of chips. It was devastating. <laughs> and for a minute, the Saints looked like they were going to knock off the Eagles for the first time since 2010 in Perth. Yeah, the year of the spoon. Uh, an important couple of moments late in that third quarter, though, Thumper. Nick Nat gives away a goal with a ruck infringement here. You have a look at this youngster, Paul Hunter, able to nail the goal his, after that. His first goal in AFL footy. Yeah, Gifted. Pretty clutch there, though. Goals uh, with two minutes left on the clock there. Rolls reversed with 17 seconds left. Now, look how he plays on quickly, Nick that goes long and Jack Darling with the big vice-like mark and then he nails it from the boundary. That was huge. Thumper, it felt like West Coast kept answering those challenges all throughout the afternoon. Absolutely and before the game, West Coast ranked third last for final quarter points conceded and as if on cue the Saints have began the final term in an absolute flurry. They've kicked three goals from their first three entries and it was a one-man wrecking crew. Max King, three out of his six in this term, all six coming from contested grabs, a big learning experience for Harry Edwards in game eight. Kings had 35, but I think he's going to be a genuine superstar. The Saints, they kicked zero goals eight against the power from set shots last week. I reckon they spent a fair bit of time on the track in the preceding days. What do you reckon? Yeah, no doubt. As Simo said in his post game that the boys didn't use the ball as well as the game went on, but that's understandable given the fatigue uh, from a pretty intense game throughout. And the Saints, they also ran really hard. You have to give them credit. But the Eagles managed to match them every time when they had to. First example, Zach Langton, the ball comes inside 50, a little touch on his left foot was critical, puts it down in front of him, he picks it up, Great scoops finish. and snaps around the corner. Great finish there. And then you look at Dom Sheed, two goals. The first one from a hit, a hit out from uh, Nick Nat was brilliant. On the left foot, he eats that. Great goal. Then the second one, look at this little handball from Tim Kelly, out the back door on his left hand, and then left foot, bang, goal by Sheed. That's the sealer. What else took your eye out there, Thumper? Well, I think we can't go past Elliot Yo. He's working back into some of his best form. He had 24 disposals, nine clearances, so strong around the ball. He had 20 contested touches. That's the second time he's had that number for his career. Seven more than anyone else on the ground. Very noticeable. Good to see Hutch get back out there for his first game of the season. Only played three games in 2020. Has had a shocking injury run. I want to touch on Josh Rotham and Harry Edwards. So, no Barris in the lineup. Schofield's retired. Gov's spending less time from de- away from defensive 50 in this game. They are both the futures, and they had some big-time moments in this game. you got Max King plucking them at every chance. you got Rotham, the ball not coming back, and that costing them a goal. But they've both stood up in other areas countless times. They had four intercept marks between them on the day, reading the ball really well. That is the future of our back line, and I think getting games into them this early, it's going to pay dividends in the long run. Yeah, great learning experience. What about the ruck battle, Thumper? Because no Rowan Marshall. Now, with no Rowan Marshall and Paddy Ryder together, they're three and eight. Unreal. The Saints. Yeah. So it was Ryder v Nick Nat, plus the backups as well, which you mentioned. And uh, it was a fascinating battle. Ryder had this snap goal early, which was really good. Nat Nui responded with a mark and goal line finish, which was, which was strong, dominating. They basically nullified each other's tap work for much of the game, really. Well, they it? normally have complete dominance when they're not facing each other, but then it was basically who's going to do the best of the backup rucks. And we see Jeremy McGovern in yeah. game 150 <laughs> get his long-awaited opportunity. He always talks about how he wanted to be a ruckman growing up. So he did it for about 15 minutes in total. When Bailey Williams was dropped, I think we all assumed Oscar Allen would just take that role as he's done. He played late in the ruck, but Gov had it early. Had nine hit-outs, looked at home. Not he, a PB, though. He had 13 back in 2015. And I had to look that up. That is unbelievable. <laughs> I can't believe someone's let him get that many early doors. Here's Simo post-game of his assessment. Well, he looked like Paulie Farmer in the first uh, quarter. and we'll <laughs> Then he blew up. Uh, he did it three stints throughout the game. Yeah, look, it's something we're exploring. Um, we, we think we're probably playing an Oscar Allen out of position at, at stages if he's going to second ruck. But we play uh, another ruck when we're probably too tall. So we're just looking at and exploring different ways to go about it. So Gov did it a bit today. Um, so pretty good success early. Um, Aussie did his thing late. But yeah, there's some of the things we're trying. So Jeremy McGovern, the youngest four-time All-Australian in AFL history. What a gun he's been, that that 150 games. And Thumper, wasn't it fantastic to see the tradition of the box mates continuing with the signs and the heads? As I said, Brody Smith setting the trend and seeing Gov's mates up in here, a bunch of larrikins, great blokes, in anonymity with the masks on. I'll tell you who didn't cover up, though. Old teammate Paddy McGinnity in the front row, <laughs> getting amongst the celebrations. Well done, boys, and Darcy getting all that sorted. West Coast have now won 10 of their 11 games in 2021, where they've had over 110 marks. That stat continuing. I wonder if the Pies will allow them for such space and ball movement as they face off. Probably around 2.15 Western Standard, we're hearing reported from Tom Morris, gives West Coast enough time to come back and isolate for enough time before their Melbourne clash 
should it continue at Optus? Who knows if that'll all go plan t -Bay. Hey, Tapa, we've had some big milestones recently, haven't we? We had Nick Nat's 200th, we've had Gov's 150, but there's one even bigger than that now. Shannon Hearn this week will play his 300th game for West Coast, the first Eagle to reach the 300 milestone. Uh, what a fantastic achievement. What a guy. And there's a fair bit of uh, Hearn media to come out of the, uh, the week. Love. I know, too much love, but we, uh, we're going to get around him. Massive milestone. It's time to run through our roast of the round, courtesy of Steak. Let's kick it all off with Brad Shepard, looking for his great mate Andrew Gaff with his hand didn't know it was coming. Hits the side of the cranium. Fail there. Elliot Yo, you rarely get to see opportunities where players can kick goals with their pants down. <laughs> He's just dropped the ball incorrectly there. Gets the dacking, wearing very bland underwear. Elliot Yo probably saw it coming, inception style, but misses that <laughs> shot on goal. No good. Skin tone. Hey, Thumper, can we roast the siren? Roast whoever you want. Well, have man. a look at this here. Gaffy, he finds Cripper, and <laughs> there's the siren. That close to an easy shot on goal. Where's your home ground advantage? Just the, just the, oh, I missed. Oh, I missed it by a second. It's all a cost us. The poor old umpire in this one in the third term. Long comes in here, he's got an easy goal really, and he smashes it right into the poor cod section of the umpire. Great hand movement there. It's probably going to put him out two to four on the injury report had he not have such great reactions. But <laughs> deemed a point, it was an interesting decision, but we push on. Let's go with Domi Sheed. Had a great last quarter, but I love these moments when you get the old cement boots on. Oh, it's happened to the best of us. Well done. What about pre-game with the teams running out? Fox footy, put him in the vortex. I thought it was in the twilight zone for a minute, but they worked it out, Fox Footy, got on them. That must have been where Ozzy was in the pregame. Have a look at her flight, which was uh, a little bit chaotic here, Thumper. She flies into the plinth with the curtain still on the treat. Bang, over she goes. <laughs> Rah for Ozzy. I think she's under concussion protocol. Hope she gets up for the next home game. And what about uh, these uh, Olympics? Uh, we're roasting them up. I think we are. So the runner-up and your, uh, your winner is going to come out of the Olympics as it should. Great time to be uh, watching some sport. Have a look at this one from the triathlon. Swimmers getting ready to start it all underway. What on earth is a boat doing there blocking half the field? And oh, look at it getting reversed. No. Serious knots to get out of the way. They've ended up swimming for 150 metres until they've called them back. That's probably cooked half the field. Of all the things that they've prepared for in the last four years, that would not be one of them, would I it? doubt they're putting virtual boats in uh, when they're simulating it. No. But that's not the winner. This is the winner. So this is the Women's Road Cycle event. Now this is the Dutch rider, one of the favourites. She goes over the line thinking she's won the gold medal. Good on her. What an achievement. Right, big celebration. Here's the, here's the celebration. Now the problem is she didn't win the gold medal. Wow. There was a breakaway by this Austrian rider. She wins the gold. The Dutch girl gets silver. She didn't find out until she went over the finish line. That is a genuine shocker. Roast worthy.